Hi everyone, Professor Bergasser here, and we're now proceeding to our second video to start reducing the data. Uh, in this video, we're going to actually access the data and see how we can do the sort of first steps of reduction, organizing what we're actually reducing, and then getting started on our calibration frames. Uh, and so here's a listing of the topics for this particular video. Again, we're going to look at uh, first setting up kind of the web pages we need to do the analysis. We're going to select our specific data set for our analysis and review and organize the logs. Then we're going to set up our folder structure on the Splat machine, start up XPEX tool, and then we're going to go right into starting to do the analysis by uh, al analyzing our calibration frames. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, first of all, the web pages you want to have open, there's three of them listed in the instructions, uh, and there are these three. The first is the data reduction organization. So you can see this is going to be a long list of things that have the first column is the kind of the date for the data. Um, sometimes there's multiple data sets within a given date. There's a link to the log folder, uh, the folder containing the log file for that date. There's some information about the program itself, and then information about who's actually reducing the data and what the status of that reduction is. That's information you're going to add as you go through. Um, now, when you're selecting, so that's the first web page, excuse me. The next web page is the specs reduction manual, which is always good to have up and available so that you have the sort of uh, tools and instructions there uh, at your fingertips. And then the last web page you're going to set up is this web page called Sinbad, which is an online astronomical database. We're going to be using this later on when we start doing the Telerk calibration. But for now, it's just good to have it up and available so that you have that information ready to go when you get to that step. So let's start at this data reduction uh, spreadsheet. And this is our main sort of organizational spreadsheet for all our reductions. And uh, again, there's a whole bunch of dates here. And what you're going to do is you're going to select one of these data sets that hasn't been picked up by one of the other reducers. Uh, those are usually marked by ready for reduction. And I'm going to actually go ahead and just do this first data set because I've already named myself as a reducer here. So I put my name down. I set the uh, status to ready, uh, sorry, reduction in progress. So folks know that I'm doing that and also setting the status state. All right. Now, the next link that's useful here is to then go to the logs. So I'm going to click on this link here. And that's going to take me to the folder that contains the logs for every year. And in this case, there's just one log, which is the one I want, 2003. This is our 2003-0521. That's 2003 May 21. Excuse me, I didn't define that earlier, but that is a notation for the date, year, 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 month, month, day, date. So 2003-05 is May, and 21 is the date. So if I click on this, um, I'm going to get a little bit of a dialogue here because this is an Excel file. Uh, in order to actually access this data, what I'm going to do is as soon as it uh, gets loaded up here, I'm going to convert this into a Google spreadsheet that I can actually edit. And I can do that with this open with tab. So if I click on Google Sheets, this now brings up the same spreadsheet in the Google Sheet format. And now I can start editing this. And you, if, you know, for your particular date, you are definitely welcome to edit and organize these logs. That's actually one of the important steps here. And also notate the log as you find some particular notes that, that provide information. All right, so here is our log sheet. There's all sorts of information here. I'm going to highlight just a few of these columns. The first is the file name. This is the original raw data file that uh, the data is corresponding to. And it has a prefix. Uh, sometimes it's SPC, sometimes it's flat, sometimes it's ARC, sometimes it's other things, depends what the user wants. There's a number uh, after that, that's the file number. There is a letter A and B, and we'll talk about what the A and B means in the next video. That has to do with how the data is actually obtained. And then the suffix just tells us what kind of file it is. Uh, this next column is the source name. Um, and usually this is kept up to date, although sometimes observers forget to change the source name. But this tells you which object is actually being observed for these data sets. And in general, we're going to be combining the data for the source, uh, for all the, you know, the same sources together to get one spectrum for that source. The next two columns gives the RA and DEC. These are the coordinates of the source in the sky. And you can notice that these coordinates change as we go to different sources. And then there's some other information that's relevant to the observational data, which we won't go into detail right now. Um, one thing I will point out is the integration here is the integration time in seconds. And we will be looking at sources that are science targets and calibration targets. And usually the calibration targets are pretty bright. And so their integration times are pretty short. As you can see, this is 120 seconds and this is only seven seconds. All right. And then um, 
the next very important setting or column here is the mode. This is the instrument's configuration. And specs can be done, observed in different kinds of configurations, getting different kinds of data. For our analysis at the start, we're going to be looking exclusively at the low resolution or LR15 mode, low res 15, which is our prism mode, which gives us this very nice low resolution, very clean spectrum that we can analyze and reduce. So that's the only data we want to look at. And so the first kind of organization step I would suggest is to go through and just highlight the sources that or the files that are labeled as low res 15. So I'm going to highlight these, these few files here. And notice uh, then it changes to this other mode, short XD. This is a different observing mode. For now, we're not going to reduce that. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But we can ignore those files. And if I keep going down, I notice that there's a few more files down here. As I scroll down, that's all the rest of them. So just for now, I'm going to highlight those just so I know which ones to pay attention to. All right. So that's our first log organization step. The next thing is to group these sources based on what kind of observation they are. And the first group I want to organize is the calibration frames. So we take additional images to essentially measure the response of the instrument to figure out both how it responds to light coming in and also to figure out what the wavelength scale is. And those calibration files are grouped together and they always have this prefix flat and arc in front of them. And all these flats, and there's usually five, and this one arc forms a calibration set. So what I'm going to do is to, to note that visually, I'm going to just make those green. You can choose whatever color you want, right? but that's what I'm going to do for here. And as we go down, you'll see that these show up again. So if I keep going down, we see here's another set. That's green. This is just a blank row, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, I'll keep going down. Here's another set. All right. And I can keep going down. There's several sets that go below this. I'm going to stop at just these first three. All right. So all of those are individual calibration sets. The next thing I'm going to note is that the source changes um, outside of these calibration frames. So initially, I'm looking at this J1104 source as these coordinates. And then I move to this next source, HD101060. And if I look over to the right, notice that the integration times are different for these. These sources, this source takes a long integration, about two minutes per exposure. This one only takes about seven seconds. Now remember, those bright stars are usually our calibration stars, and they require much less integration time. So it's likely that these stars, and often they will start with HD something, because those are a catalog of bright stars, are our calibration sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those also apart visually. I'm going to highlight those in red. Uh, there's another set here, 101.369. Again, nice short integration time. Um, I'm already anticipating there's a, maybe an issue here because this first exposure seems to be a longer integration time than the other ones. So I might actually flag that as maybe orange as something that might be problematic. Um, and we'll see why it's it kind of clear that that's the case for just a little bit. And then go down, and then here's another pair right here, 111744. I'm going to make that a nice red color. OK, so what I've done is organize my log sheet by the calibrations in green, my science targets in yellow, and my calibrator stars in red. And that's enough to get us started. All right, so the next step now is now that we have figured out what data set we're looking at, we've organized the logs a little bit. We're now going to go into the Splat machine, into our remote login, and organize uh, our data and actually start reducing. So let me log in here. All right, so here we are to our familiar screen. Um, the first thing we're going to do is open up our file system and go into our home directory, which we're already in. And remember, we created this reductions folder here. I'm going to double click on that to go into that folder. And I'm going to create a new folder for reducing this nights of data. So I'm going to make a new folder here out of file. And I'm going to call it 2003-0521. That's the date of the data that we're looking at. And then inside that folder, I'm going to create two new folders, a CALS and a PROC. The CALS folder is going to contain our calibration files, which we're going to reduce in this video. 
And the proc folder is going to contain our processed spectral files. These will be all our 1D spectra uh, that we want to look at uh, for our science work. All right, so that's getting ourselves organized. Now we can go ahead and start up X specs tool. And remember that this is in the um, bash and IDL environment. But before we go any further, we're actually going to CD change directory into the folder that uh, we want to be working in. And that folder is CD reductions and then 2003 All right, so we're going to start up IDL from here. So to start up IDL, it's type bash first to get those environmental variables set. And then IDL, you can tell it worked because we get the IDL prompt here. And now to start specs tool, we're just going to start up by typing in X specs tool. And we get our big window here with an error message about what where the folders are, but that's okay for now. All right, so we need to set three different paths here. The first is the path to the raw data. And the raw data is on the Splat machine. It's in this directory slash data slash spec. So if I go into our file system, this gets us to the very top level folder. And you can see there's a data folder here. And then there is a specs folder here. And then there's a whole bunch of different uh, folders. And if I go down to the bottom here, 2005 to one, you see all of these FITS files. These are our raw data files, and that's what we're going to be analyzing in this process. So what I want to do is just set this first path to that directory, and it's actually already set slash data slash specs slash 2003.05 to one. That's the raw data directory. For these other two paths, I can just type cal and proc, right? Because those are the folders I just set up. I need to go back to our home directory. Reductions. Oh, sorry, cows. Go. By the way, if you make a mistake, let's say I put cow just by accident, and I go to the next step, it will complain and say it can't find it. So that's a good, nice error check. You can go back and make sure that's right. All right. So now I've clicked to this next section, and this is where we're going to reduce our calibration files. So if we go back to our log sheet, remember that these are the things that I've highlighted in green. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to uh, extract all of these together. So all of these file numbers, 15 through 20, we're going to treat as one calibration set unit. And all I have to do is just put in 15 to 20 in that first row and first column. You don't have to worry about these sky files or sky prefix because that's for a different mode of, of observing. It's just this first column that you worry about. So if I just put those numbers in and I run make calibration frames, it's going to go off and do some stuff. And in the end, that's it. <laughs> so we don't see much. There's not much to interact with this, but it's actually taking that data and, and essentially processing it into the kind of files it needs to analyze the um, response and the wavelength calibration. Not very exciting, uh, but it, it's nice because it, it does it all to itself. Now, remember that we have several different calibration sets in here. So the great thing about this, this particular step is that I can extract all of these all at the same time. So I have a set that goes from 34 to 39, a set that goes from 48 to 53. So if I go back in here, and I clear this table, and I put 34 to 39, 48 to 53. Then I can run those two calibrations at the same time. So again, I just click on that and sit back for 10 seconds, and voila, it's already done. And you can tell that you're done by going into your calibration folder. And what you'll find is that there are now some files in there. And those files correspond to the combined flat field and the combined wavelength calibration information that it needs to analyze the rest of the data set. All right, so that's it uh, for this first step. In the next video, we're going to start extracting the spectra, converting 2D images into 1D images, and that's going to get us on the pathway of getting our final science spectra. See you next time.